before Yahawashai came um, in his first advent, okay, John the Baptist had a mission to do first. He had to pave the way, prepare the way for the coming of Adawan, Yahawashai and Mashayak. And in preparing the way, he basically taught repentance in preparation for the coming Lord, coming Adawan, Yahawashai, who people know more, know more commonly as Jesus. All right. And then when Yahawashai did take over from John's ministry, Yahawashai was still teaching repentance. So what is the truth about repentance? What do we need to know regarding repentance? What really is it? And have we done it? Or are we doing it? Have we repented? Are we repenting truly? All right. That's what this video is all about. Right. We're going to be looking into the truth about repentance. All right. Because it's an important topic, clearly, for John the Baptist to have prepared the way teaching this, and then for Yahweh Shai himself to continue urging the need, yeah, um, and highlighting the need for repentance, it's clearly of great importance, of great significance, and we need to get to grips with that, all right? So welcome, all right? Let's get straight into it, Israel. Let's get straight into it and glean what we can from the scriptures, all under the guidance and the inspiration of Yahweh himself. All right, through his uh, Rokha Kwadash, right, his Holy Spirit. All right, then, let's get straight into it. So let me get uh, into some scriptures. Okay. Uh, let's get that on screen for you. All right, then. Okay, I think um, what I'd like to do then is to kick off with is go to the book of Mark, yeah, the gospel according to Mark. All right. So here we are. I've got it on screen. All right. Um, I'm going to read verses. First of all, I'm going to read verses uh, one to four. All right. So first one. Yeah. All right. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God, as it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. All right. So this is giving us a good summary, really, of the works of John the Baptist. Yeah. John did baptize, this is verse four. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins in order to, to do away with sins, all right? So therefore we can see there's a relationship then between repentance and the remission of sins, all right? To do away with your sins, all right? Important, that's very, very important. So this is what John was doing to prepare the way for Yahawashai. And then when Yahawashai comes, let's go, let's fast forward to verse 14, and I'll read verses 14 to 15, yeah? So this is still Mark chapter 1, verse 14 now, right? Okay, verse 14. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus, Yahawashai, came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. So we know that the gospel, then the good news is all about the kingdom of God. That's that's another thing to also uh, never forget. All right. The coming kingdom. And remember the kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the good news is all about a new 
governance on earth coming, yeah, a, um, under a divine order, all right? That's what's coming, Israel, all right? Verse 15, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand, yeah? Repent ye and believe the gospel. This is the words of Yahawashai now. Repent ye and believe the good news, the glad tidings. Do you see that? Repentance is an ongoing necessity. All right? Ongoing necessity. All right? And we saw earlier, didn't we, that repentance was all about the remission of sins. We saw that in verse 4. Yeah, that John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for what? For the remission of sins. All right. So this is important. Let's keep digging. Let's get more scriptures out on this. All right. So um, just to show that it is indeed, it is linked to sins. Let's go to Luke. Chapter 5, I'm going to go straight to verse 32 here on screen. Luke 5, 32, words of Yahweh Shai. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So sinners need to repent. Sinners need to repent in order to get into the kingdom of God. Okay, it's so important to get this right, right? Sinners need to repent, okay? So who are the sinners? Who are sinners, okay? First of all, let's, let, let's look at that because you might say, well, that's, that, you know, well, I've never sinned. Some may believe you've never sinned. Um, there's many people today who don't think of themselves as sinners, all right? So let's take a look at that. Let's see what the scripture has to say regarding that, all right? So let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 3, and I'm going to go to verse uh, 23. Let's get it up on the screen. Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So nobody's exempt from this. All have sinned. In fact, the only sinless one was Yahweh Shai himself, which is why he's the only one who was worthy, for example, to open the seven seals. But that's another topic. All right. So for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah, we've all sinned. Yeah. And we, and we, and we you know, we, we, we do sin. We do, we, we do sin. Yeah. Um, first John. Let's have a look at that. Let's go to first John. Yeah. Chapter one. OK, I'm going to go to chapter one. Um, and I'm gonna, let's scroll down to verse uh, eight. Chapter one, verse eight. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. You see that? So nobody says who doesn't have any sin, you're deceiving yourself, you're lying to yourself. All right? Because you, you've got a fleshy body. All right? Now, it doesn't mean you set out to sin. There's a big difference between, um, you know, willful rebellion and those who slip up because of the, the, the weakness of the flesh. All right? But who still strive for perfection. All right? And, you know, we'll come on to that. So if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So we must we must um, own up to it, you see. All right. Uh, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there is a way to be cleansed when you do, you know, if and when you do sin uh, and you, you will sin, you will fall short in some way at some point. Yeah, not that you're setting out to do that. Big difference. Verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So it's clear then. We are all in need of having our sins taken away. We're all in need of forgiveness. All right. Therefore, we all need to repent. And to be repenting. Right? This applies, this message applies to everyone. Of all. Okay? 
All right. Um, so repentance will bring about the remission of sins. Yahweh Shai came to call sinners to repentance. You repent to have your sins blotted out. So knowing what sin is is very important. We need to know what it is we're repenting of. In order to know what we're repenting of, we need to understand what sin is so that we know to repent of it. So what is sin? All right, what is sin? Okay, so um, we've touched on this in previous, in other videos, all right? But no apologies for going over this because it's crucial for our spiritual walk. You know, walking humbly and obediently with our God, the God of Israel, all right? Our Alhayam, all right? So um, let's remind ourselves as to what sin is. Not what people imagine sin to be, but the biblical definition of sin. Let's remind ourselves, all right? So for that, let's go to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. That is an essential definition. Because it shows us that sin is breaking the law, transgression of the law. Those who are telling you that there is no law, all right, that all law is done away with, and, and, and by the way, promoting therefore a lawless society, all right, would also, by definition, you're telling you that there is no sin in the world. You only need to watch the news to see that sin is very much still in the world. Um, and to do away with that, we're telling there's no need to repent then. If there, is no, if there is no law, then there is now no need for repentance. All right, um, let's uh, dig deeper into this. Let's, let's, let's look deeper. Um, okay, it's so important. We must be keeping the law. Yeah, we must be keeping the law. If we're not, yeah, and that's what repentance is all about. Okay, um, I can't, this can't be stressed enough. For those who say that the law's been done away with, then you did away with what John the Baptist was trying to do. John the Baptist was, was, was making it clear that the kingdom of God was coming. The, the Lord himself, Yahweh Shai himself was coming and that people needed to get ready for that. And the way to do that, yeah, was to repent and be baptized. Repent. And then Yahweh Shai continued the message of repentance. And that message still stands and ought to still be going out today to repent. If you're in sin, to repent, to turn away from that, to come out from that, to put an end to that, and to come out, all right? That is what John the Baptist taught. That's what Yahweh Shai continued to, to, to instruct and command and teach. And that still stands for today. Because sin is very much still with us today. Okay? For those who think it isn't, because if you think that Christ, that Christ's crucifixion did away with all sin, you'd be mistaken. You can still sin willfully, even though Christ has come and sacrificed himself. All right? And we'll, we'll look at that in this video. All right? Okay. Um, that'll be coming up shortly. Okay? Because I don't intend this video to be too long in any case, all right? So sin is the transgression of the law. So we must start keeping the law. To repent is to stop breaking the law and to start keeping the law, all right? It's so important, okay? Now, in our current situation and circumstances, all right, um, and with the advent of Yahweh Shai, the ultimate um, um, offering, the ultimate sacrifice, we do not sacrifice anymore. We don't do animal sacrifice anymore, all right? So the sacrificial laws, absolutely, 
are now made redundant because it, the, full, the fulfillment of that was, was Yahweh Shai himself. All right. But that doesn't throw out the other bodies of law. There's still dietary laws. There's still other laws of morality. Yeah. Including but not limiting, limited to the classic Ten Commandments. All right. And then, of course, you've got the foundation commandments of to love God with all your heart, mind and soul and love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Which is which the Ten Commandments is all about that, by the way. Yeah. The first four commandments teach you about um, loving God with all your heart, mind and soul. And the last six. About loving your neighbor as yourself. All right. So um, anyway, I, I'm not going to go too deep on, on that. For those interested in that, there are some videos on this channel. This is the Awake channel uh, on the law. You know, please take a look if you if you haven't done so already. All right. Or if there's anything else um, you know confusing you, then please feel free to contact us at Israel Away. All right. Um, I'll give some details at the end of this video of how you can contact us. You know, if you if you if you if you feel prompted to. All right. And we'd be more than happy to um, you know um, address your issues, concerns, or just your questions and queries. Yeah. Or points of interest. All right. Okay. So sin is the transgression of the law. So clearly then, repentance is all about putting an end to breaking the laws of God, the laws, statutes, and commandments, and to start obeying them. Because in doing that, what you're doing is you're reconnecting back to Yahweh, yeah, who truly is your power, all right? Really is, yeah? That's the way to blessings and a happy life. And a fulfilling uh, life off into eternity. All right. Um, okay. So repentance, repentance is a must. We need that to be forgiven of, of, of the transgressions against the law. All right. Let's take a look at that. Let's go to Acts. Yeah, look at Acts. I'll get that up on the screen. Acts chapter three. I'll go straight to verse 19. Let's take a look at this. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. You see that? Repent therefore and be converted. In other words, you, you don't just, you, you, you repent, but, but there's got to be a conversion. There's got to be that, that, that desire, that, that, that zeal to not, Continuing your sins, you know, not to repent, and you have no desire to return to them. Yeah, and remember, we can do all things through Yahweh Shaya Mashayak. Yeah, through Jesus, we can do all things. You can't do these things just by yourself necessarily. All right, you will always need that help. That's what he's there for, as our high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Yeah, our mediator. Yeah, that's partly why his blood was shed. Yeah, to save us from our sins as well as our enemies and those who hate us. All right. So that's that's all to be seen in the scriptures. OK, but repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. So we need to be repenting so that our sins may be blotted out. All right. This is so important. Yeah, because without repentance. We'll perish. Let, let's just cut to the chase. Let's just be honest and open about that. If, if we don't repent. When we've transgressed the law, remember the wages of sin is death. But the gift, yeah, but the gift of God is eternal life. Yeah, it's a death penalty yeah, at some point. And I'm not just talking the first death. I'm talking, you know, the second death. Where after that, that's it. All right. Um, so um, let's just let's just get the scripture on that. Yeah, because um, um, Yahweh Shai said it himself. Let's go to Luke. Yeah, Luke chapter 13. And let's go straight to verse 3. Okay. Words of Yahweh Shai. Yeah. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Yahweh Shai is not mincing his words here. He's not really being concerned about treading on eggshells here. He's telling us as it is, because we need to know. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. 
that's why this this message in this video, uh, it, like any message from the mouth of God of Allah Hayam, yeah, is important. Okay, it's so important. It sounds so cliche. No, repent, repent. It sounds so cliche, but no, we really need to understand what repentance is and why it's so important and always has been. And it's at the heart of the, of the ministry of John the Baptist and continued to be the heart of the ministry of Yahweh Shai. All right, so important. Okay, except you repent, you will perish. So it's a very, very important matter. It's a matter, literally a matter of life and death. Literally, okay. Now, some of you may be watching this video thinking, hey, you know, um, I accept Jesus in my heart, so I don't need to worry. Yeah, it's all taken care of, all right, and covered by grace. Yeah, I'm covered by grace, I don't need to worry about the law anymore, all right. And like I say, I, I, I don't into some depth on previous videos um, on the law, yeah, which you'll find. In this channel please take a look if you haven't already done so as i've said all right but what i will say is just just do it just a little quick reminder okay that's not how it works brothers and sisters the blood of yahweh shai was not meant for willful rebellion mistakes yeah all right it's like a like a baby learning to walk all right if it falls down you don't kick the baby do you? You, you? you try to encourage upwards. That's what his blood was for. So if you fall down, you didn't mean to fall down. All right. But the flesh let you down, so to speak. OK, Paul spoke about the, 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 the tug of war going on between the carnal side and the, and the spirit side. All right. So, you know, we, we do experience that. The creator knows that. Of course he does. That's why we're told in Psalm 103. Yeah. Uh, verse 13 through to 14 that, you know, he, as a father pities his children, he pities us because he remembers our frame. He knows that we're dust. Yeah, dust thou art, dust thou shalt return. We consist of the, you know, the earth. That's our casing, that's our mortal coil. All right, he knows the limitations that go along with that. He knows that better than any of us do. All right, so that's what Yahweh Shai came to, 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 to help with. But willful rebellion? Absolutely not. Yeah, a stubborn, stiff neck stance. Yeah, where you just want to do it your own way, create your own hybrid religion, because that's what it will be when you start to drift away from the word of the Most High, and start to imagine what God, what God is pleased with, and start to imagine what the Lord and Savior is, is you know, is uh, what He finds acceptable. All right, you've got to be going back to the Word. All right, let's just let's just get that. Um, so let's. Go. Let's go to the fact that, first of all, grace is not a license to sin, all right? Um, a lot of people try to get confused with Paul's letters. I know, I know, all right? Peter said people would get confused with Paul's letters, okay? Um, it's, it's not surprising people get uh, confused with Paul's letters, okay? But know this, Paul was not advocating that the law is done away with in the way some people try to teach it and preach it, all right? Um, and we know that, yeah, how I never did. He said, don't think that I've come to abolish the law. I never came to abolish it, is what he said, all right? Um, like I said, I don't want to go too much into that side of things. But what I will do now, let's go over to find out that Paul himself makes it clear that grace is no replacement for keeping the law. Um, so let's do that. Romans chapter 6, all right? Uh, yeah. And I'm going to stop in verse 1. Okay. Letter to the Romans, chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So, Carol's sinning, which is the transgression of the law. So, shall we continue breaking the law? Yeah? That grace may abound? God forbid. That means no. How shall we, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? You see, we're supposed to be dead to sin not continuing in it, dead to the transgression of the law, not to continue transgress, transgressing the law, all right? So no, you can't say I'm under grace, therefore I can just do what I want. Yeah? 
I know people say they're not they're not saying that, but in effect, that's exactly what's been said or what's been done in reality. All right. Um, so this makes it quite clear then that grace is not a license to sin. Grace is just that. It's grace. You know, even in um, the world of banking. OK, if you say you have a mortgage. And you run into financial difficulties, say you lost your job and you're looking for a new one. And therefore, you can't keep up with the repayments on your mortgage because you're going through this difficult time. You can um, make a request of the bank to say, look, go for a hard time. Um, if you can just allow me a mortgage holiday. Um, so, i.e., you don't have to pay, maybe for make an arrangement, say, for the next three, four months, you know, not, have to pay, um, not having to pay the mortgage to give you enough time to get yourself back into work. And, when, and then you'll make a, you know, a rearrangement to resume payments and to cover some of the costs with a new arrangement. All right. That mortgage holiday is a grace period. Literally, it's called a grace period. All right. Now, does that grace period mean that the mortgage is forever written off? No. It's grace until an appointed time where the arrangement is now you should start making your repayments. Yeah. That's what's going on here. You see, the grace period is, is time for us to get ourselves together. To learn by mistake and to get ourselves together. All right. Where Father literally winks at your sin at this point, right? Allowing you time. Because remember, it's actually a harsh, harsh, it's supposed to be a harsh punishment. Before grace, it was the death penalty. People got stoned to death for breaking the law. <laughs> yeah. Um, and all the rest of it. All right. So um, that's not that's not being pushed today because we're still on that grace period, but the windows, the grace period is coming to a close. All right. The biblical prophecies reveal that, okay? So it's not a license to sin. Uh, and just to bring that out even more, let's go over to, um, we we'll go to the book um, Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews, yeah? Uh, chapter 10, and I'll go ver straight to verse 26. Take a look at this, right? Look at this, very clear. For if we sin willfully, after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. You see that? Yeah. Um, let me um, just back up. Um, right. So I'm going to read from verse 25 again. Well, from verse 25 straight into verse 26. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. So I wanted to go back to verse 25 so you get that, that sense of the day approaching. All right. Yeah, time, times, we're moving on in time. We're getting closer and closer, aren't we? To the return of our king. Yeah. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth, which we have, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. So see, that's a big difference. You can sin accidentally. The blood of Yahushai will cover that. But to sin willfully, oh no, there's no more sacrifice to sin, for sins for that. There's no, he's not going to sacrifice himself again and again. That was a one-time sacrifice. To cover your accidental sins, not your willful sins, not your stubborn positions, not your stubborn position based on false doctrine. All right? Let's let's just be honest. We have to be honest because this is a serious matter. All right. So Hebrews, that's Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Um, OK, um, let's get another example of this. OK, um, only a couple more scriptures to, to go. I just want this to be a quite a, quite a, sh a, a short video, really, um, relatively speaking. All right. Let's go over to John. Let's, I want to show you something in John, something to, to remind you of. All right. So, John, um, and I'm going to start right from verse one. Yeah. This is about the adulterous woman. All right. The adulteress. OK. Jesus, Yahweh Shai, went onto the Mount of Olives. 
And early in the morning, he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses, Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. And this goes back to what I was saying earlier, that before the grace period, you know, the penalty for this would be death by, by stoning, for example, for uh, a sin like this. Yeah. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? They were testing Yahweh to see what he would say, knowing that this is definitely a man of the law. So let's we'll see what he'll say about this lady. All right. Because they also knew that um, he was showing a lot of um, mercy in, and healings. All right. So verse uh, six. This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. Yeah. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Right? And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, which goes back to what we were looking at before that, the fact that all have sinned, yeah? Including myself, including you, the viewer. We've all sinned, all right? And we all, we, and we still have the capacity to sin, all right? Um, if indeed, you know, the, the flesh gets the better of us, all right? So verse nine, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus, Yahawashai, was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. All right. Now, a lot of people you take this to mean, you see, she sinned, but basically, Jesus let her off. Um, and, and that's you'll keep doing that. So no matter what you do, yeah, no matter if, if you're living a life of sin, as long as you confess that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, he'll keep letting you off. Well, that's not right. Because we already saw in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, that willful sin, well, there's no more sacrifice or willful sinning. We saw that. You cannot cherry pick your favorite verses and make a whole doctrine to suit yourself of it. It's, yeah, we mustn't do that. All right? So important. Okay? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. That's every word. You can't pick and choose. Every word. We've got to bring the whole Bible together. You know, here a little and there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. I think most, uh, most of you will know uh, that, that biblical formula. All right. So verse nine. Um, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, because they, they know they do sin themselves as well, went out one by one, beginning at the elders, even until the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. All right. But look at this. When Jesus, Yahweh Shai, had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, to her, woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? And she said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. So he's giving her a chance. He was being merciful. God, God is Tawab. That's good. Yeah. And his mercy does endure forever, yeah? But he will not be exploited, yeah? He still demands something of us. She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. A lot of people conveniently forget that last part of verse 11. Yes, he was merciful. Yes, he didn't condemn her on this occasion. But he made it very clear. At no point is he giving her a license to continue, to continue in sin. He's telling her, I'm not condemning you. They didn't condemn you. I'm not going to condemn you. But don't be committing adultery anymore. Don't be committing any sin anymore. The message to that lady is the message to each one of us still today. 
And we know sin is the transgression of the law. So not one of us are permitted to transgress the law. All right. That's what repentance is all about, Israel. All right. That's what it's all about. Okay. So if some of you are in churches or in congregations where you're being taught that there is no law to be kept, then that does away. Think and pray about this. That does away with the whole necessity to repent. All right. Um, so um, I think um, I'm gonna, the final verse I'm going to bring out is um, Acts, Book of Acts, chapter 17, yeah, and verse 30. All right. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. All right. Because uh, we're going to get a principle here. And the times of this ignorance, yeah, ignorance meaning lack of knowledge, the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. You see that? So the only reason why we're still, yeah, yeah, the reason why we're still living and breathing and carrying on and the world seems to be carrying on is only because the Father's been winking at our ignorance. But he does command us to repent. Yeah. And your prophecy is revealing that we're in those last days now. We're in the last days. All right. Time is ticking away, so to speak. All right. We need to get right with Yahweh. We need to get right with Yahweh. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to stop that there. All right. Um, very, very important topic. That's why it was the entire ministry of John the Baptist. Yahweh Shai never stopped teaching. Um, and commanding repentance, right? He never, ever stopped doing that, all right? So we mustn't stop repenting. We need to ensure, and, you know, and if we haven't repented about something, we need to be doing just that, all right? We need to be doing just that. So think about it, pray about it, all right? Um, let's um, spread this word, okay? Spread it with friends, family, contacts, yeah, people you think may appreciate it. Uh, even some of those who you think may not appreciate it, that's fine too. Yeah, if it can spark a dialogue, good. It's good to talk about these things. All right. Um, iron sharp and iron and all the rest of it. All right. So Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 to 38 um, helps to explain this. That then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest, all right? Because it's a harvest of souls, all right? Father's waking up more and more people to the truth, all right? Um, and wants more and more of us laborers to go and bring the harvest in, all right? So one way to do that is to spread this word, all right? Um, Proverbs 11, verse 30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. So it is a wise thing to win souls. Yeah, for, for, for the most high. First Corinthians chapter three, verse nine. But we are laborers together with um, God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. All right. So let's labor together to get the work done. Yeah. Uh, three John verse eight. We therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. So let's work together to be fellow helpers to the truth. Yeah. This is all from the scripture. All right. Um, Matthew 24, verse 14, and this gospel, good news, glad tidings of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, that's exactly what's going on right now. You're hearing this word because this is happening. This prophecy of Yahweh is happening right now, indicating that the end is nigh. All right. So with that, how can you help? How can you be a fellow helper? How can you labor in this truth? Yeah, if this video has done anything for you, um, giving you a new insight or inspired you, all right, yeah, then please um, like it by pressing the thumbs up button, if you will, um, because that will help, you know, to, to just boost his profile uh, and share, share with others, all right? If you're not a subscriber, then please subscribe, all right? Um, and click the full bell for all notifications. That way, whenever there's a video being uploaded, you'll be sure to be notified yeah, and given a heads up on that. 
so that you don't miss any forthcoming videos. And um, last but not least, if, if you've got any questions, any queries, anything you want to share, anything at all, yeah, relating to this truth, then um, please do feel free to send us an email at israelawaken7 at gmail.com, as it says there on screen. All right. So that's about it. I think that's all um, I'm wanting to say for now. Um, so we'll look here. Yeah, so guys, um, as I say, if you're new to this channel as well, all right, then please feel free to, you know, have a look around at some of the other videos, all right? Um, you have a, a, a little a little uh, nosy around, so to speak, all right? And um, I think for now, we'll stop that there, okay? And um, Shalom Israel, most I bless you and yours. <laughs>